never hurts to, to have a refresh on that. So go ahead, Don. Make sure we have the volumes up there. Well, first off, let me let me say that that what what I'm doing is the way I do a platter. It, it's not necessarily what I would call the right way or the wrong way. It's the way I do it. The way you do it is is perfectly fine. Uh, everybody has their own way of doing it. If it works for you, that's what you need to do. Don't try to change to the way somebody else does it if it doesn't feel good. Just do it your own way. Is it, did anybody get a, a handout? Everybody, anybody else needs a handout? Um, and you, you can take it home with you or you can throw it away, whatever you want to do. Uh, hope I got enough for everybody. Uh, I just threw this hand out together, so kind of. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the last two we got. Okay. Hey, Don, if yeah. you could email that to Cheryl, we can put that on the website there. You okay. have a copy of email, Don? Yeah, I can do that. Okay. Okay. What else is one? One extra, two extra. First, the first thing uh, that I do is, is, you know, finding a piece of wood, of course, to, to make it out of, and it, and it can be whatever. If, you know, if you've got a board ten inches wide and you want to make a platter ten inches, great. If you if you want to make a small platter, you could, you just got to use what wood that you've got. So measure your wood up, cut your cut your platter around. Decide which is to me. Decide which is going to be the front, and which is going to be the back. And the reason I say that, see, this piece of maple has got a bad place on, it. so that's going to be the bottom side of it. Because when I turn the platter, when I turn the platter, this is the bottom. That wood, that bad place is going to be the bottom up. It's going to turn away. You don't want to turn it around this way. And make this the front because you can't turn it away unless you make your platter so much thinner and thinner and thinner so make it thinner from the bottom side and then when you do that i don't know how many of you have done it like i've done it. You, you get something ready and then you're not paying attention and you you forget which is the face front face side or the back side so i always take a pencil and just write bottom or face on it you, you can sand it off scratch it off the, the bigger and the darker you uh, make it, the easier it is to see and uh, keeps you from screwing things up. Uh, and, as you can see down here, talking, of, and, and this is what, the way I do platters at home, uh, I use a vacuum chuck to hold them. Oh, I'm sorry, what time? A vacuum chuck. There's two things that I bought that I would recommend to everybody. One of them is one of these swing away things. If you've got a big lathe, because like Tim said, the older you get, the heavier this thing gets. That is wonderful. Roland put me onto that. The next thing, if, if you're going to turn platters and stuff like that, a vacuum chuck is wonderful. Gosh, it's wonderful. There's a guy, you see him advertised in the back of some of these magazines called Frugal Vacuum Chucks. It's, it's a good vacuum system. It works well. You can buy, you can buy a kit from him that... When you buy the vacuum chuck, you get the piece to go on here to put your plate on. Then you can buy a kit and get a piece of PVC and you can make one this big around, this big around, this big around, whichever size you need. So if you're turning little bitty stuff, you don't need a vacuum piece this big around. You can make you one that big around, stick it on there, and it works great. In 10 words or less, how do you center it when you turn it around? Or put it on? Do what now? When you put it on the chuck, how do you get it centered? Okay. That's the next step. When you when you when you when you when you turn this, when you cut it out, you're gonna cut it with a, or you're gonna mark it with a compass. That's gonna give you a point right there. Turn it over and mark it on this side too. So when you go in here and you've got it marked on this side. And you've got it marked on this side. When you turn the bottom first, when you turn the bottom first on the on the plate, 
You're going to put a screw in it here first. I'm talking about with the vacuum chips. With the vacuum, I'm going to get to that. You put a put your put your uh, pin pin jaws, not pin jaws, but the uh, mark screw. Yeah, Just put it in the center here. Bring your tail stock up, mark it here. Then you're going to cut a ring in here to mount onto your four jaw chuck. Well, you got it marked center over here either time. So mark it on both sides. When you bring that up, go right in that little hole right there. And so you got centered on both sides. Does that answer your question? Uh, so if you don't have a vacuum chuck, what would you do to put a piece if, if you don't have a vacuum chuck, I mean, you're saying if you don't have a vacuum right. chuck. Well, when you cut, cut your rim here in the bottom for your four jaw chuck to fit into, and you turn it around this way, you're going to put the four jaw chuck in it and spread it out. Yeah, but how are you going to mount it when you start? Are you going to use a uh, worm screw? Yeah, not, no, no, no. Yeah, you, you, in, in instance here, I've got a worm screw in here. Oh. And that's that's what I do. But if I was using a vacuum chuck, I wouldn't use a worm screw. Have you ever used uh, a hot melt? No. no. Uh, yes. Does that piece where, you, where the vacuum chuck goes, does it need to be planed off super flat or can it still be it, you know, it, suc for suction reasons? Well, when you put it up against the vacuum chuck, you're going to put a piece of rubber on it. And so if it is a little bit rough, that rubber, little thin yeah, piece of rubber is going to pack down in there and tighten it up and it's not going anywhere. It's not going anywhere. And unless you get a really bad catch, I've never had one to come off of my vacuum chuck. So, and those vacuum uh, that you would use for a vacuum press, would that vacuum work? No, that I don't know. Like a vacuum press system where you, for veneer? Yeah, if you it, have, a, it, it you have a, a big vacuum pump, yeah, the, vac pump. The, the, the pump is the key if it puts out enough volume. It actually doesn't need a lot of volume, but it needs... Uh, yeah, it's so. like 27 inches. Yeah, that's yeah. good. Oh, yeah, that'd be yeah. way more. Yeah. That'd be way more. But, what I do is most of the time when I'm turning a, a platter, and I've turned stuff real, real deep platters, but this is an inch thick, and so as you can see in here, I measure my my uh, worm screw. Take it back off here. Whoops. Got a wrench. Well, that's all. So, I, I can do it. I can do it. A wrench for the. I was going to take the when I went to unscrew this it was coming it was coming off the lady but that's all right that's all right uh, with this being only uh, an inch thick I try not to let the the, 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 uh, the worm screw go in over three eighths of an inch because I, that's that's deep enough to hold it okay And put it on there. Okay. I got it. I got it. Did you cut those blanks or did you tie them? What now? Did you cut those blanks yourself? I cut the blanks myself, yes. This back of this worm screw sticks out a little bit far, so I only want it to come in three eighths of an inch into this wood. So I've got a bunch of these different things. It's just a plate and some of them are thicker than others, depending on how deep I want it to come. In this instance, I only want it to come three eighths, so this piece measured fifteen sixty fourths, and that that just allows it to come in three eighths of an inch. You're going to, you're going to cut a groove in the bottom of the plate for your four jaw chuck to sit into. So how do you turn those side rings exclusively, or? Doing hand grain. Uh, most everything I turn is side grain, unless I'm doing boxes or something. Then that, that's hand grain. You're gonna cut that. You're gonna cut the mortise in the bottom of it. Uh, go in here and flatten it off and get it smooth to begin with, and then I'll show you uh, how, I, how I mark the, the bottom of it.
the lake is it's not plugged in. It's not plugged in. Turn the switch back off. Yeah. Here, hand me the. I got it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I didn't even look at that to begin with. No, nah, Gerald wasn't here to plug it in. <laughs> you would think I would Anything that's wrong today is Gerald's fault. Just remember that. <laughs> now, a lot of people turn really fast. I don't turn really fast. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go in here and, and face it off and get it smooth. Oh, uh, just down a little bit. So you said you don't turn fast. That's over a thousand, isn't it? No, it's about, I think it was about 500. No, it was, yeah. About 1,300. Cut it down a little bit. That must not be the speed on that side. Now, when you think you've got it faced off, it's good and smooth, and you don't feel any bumps in it. I do take a, a pencil and get to it. Stick a pencil to it, and that tells me if it's if the, if the black mark is the same all the way around. It's pretty flat. This is not pretty flat because I can still see my writing in here. As a novice, Don, when you're smoothing that out, is it just touch to keep the gauge, to gauge your depth, that you, to keep it even, or is it... Well, I'm trying to get it flat and smooth on the front. Basically, it's touch, or is yeah. it how you hold the tool against the rest? Well, I've just got, I'm doing almost like a slicing cut. And I put the tool up against me like this, and for years I turned like this. Well, that's not good. You don't, you you can't get it smooth like that. You need to do it like this. Hold the tool steady and slide your body back. Let your body go into it. That way you get a you get a lot smoother. You're just using the lower wing of that. Yes, I'm just using the lower wing. You just, just, just to kind of face it off and get it, get it smooth. Still got a, you still got a bump in it. Chuck in there because I do a lot of platters at times. Uh, get that out of the way. I'll bring this up and I won't, I won't put this into the center. I'll just put it right up against it. And tighten it up like this. Now. My, my, I've got 130 millimeter jaws on my vacuum, on my uh, four jaw chuck, which opens up to about five inches when they're closed completely down. It's about five inches down. I can take this little thing that I've made. I've got a little bit of nail stuck in it right here. I hang it over that right there. Hang it over that piece right there. Turn the lathe on. Just barely push it up against the There, there's my mark right there. So you've got one of those size to whatever. You've got several of those pieces. I've got several of them. Yeah. Depend, depending on what I'm doing, a, a 10 inch platter, if I'm doing a smaller platter, uh, I've got one here. Now, I've got another one here. This, this one's for, for a different purpose. I'll get to it in a moment. So now, go back and take this off. Let me know if you can swing that tail stock out of the way. Done. 
Hmm? Let me know if I need to swing that out. No, way. it's fine. It's fine. I'll take a part in two. Sir? Since we just talked Since about Since we safety. just talked about it, yeah. Okay. Once I got that done, I'll come back now. It's good and tight. You don't want this, you don't want the jaws to open up and have a big gap between each one of the jaws. When they're, when they're tightened down real tight like that, you don't get a, a, a compression into the wood and joints, four compressions inside. So it leaves it pretty smooth. If you if you've sanded it and finished it and everything, that's the way you want it, then put it in the four jaw chuck, tighten it down. And you're ready to go again. Now, at this point, I'm going to come back in here, clean up the rest of the end of it. Hey, Doc. Yes, sir. How deep was your depression on that back side for the jaw? An eighth of an inch. If, if, I, if my worm screw hole is three eighths and my mortise on the back side is an eighth, that leaves me a half inch to come down to come down into here and still have plenty of thickness because I'm that is that's getting close to. That's getting close to a half inch, but it's still thick enough that it's not you're not gonna cut through it. You still got room. Now is that maple or ash or this is maple. Yeah. I most of my platters I use maple. It's just because a lot of my platters I would burn on and it doesn't show up real well if it's on Wood burn it and show it real well if it's on the wall or something. So I just use maple. I like maple. I like bread to pair, but I'll uh, not to do it anymore. You space this off. Yep. I'm sorry. 
Yeah. 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 There's no need in facing this whole board off. It's, it's, there's, there's no reason to do it. All you want to do is face it off right here because you're going to take all of this away anyway. It's, it's more like a slicing cut because okay. uh, I want the I want the stuff to come off of it I, I just don't want to get caught with a with a catch or something I just want to I'm, I'm slow I don't do things real like Randy new does things real fast I don't I'm slow so I just do a little bit at a time uh, kind of worried about you know trying to do a, a whole platter for the meeting because like I say I am slow uh, now, if, if I'm going if I'm going to embellish it, depending on how I'm going to embellish it, uh, I come in here and generally what I do is I put a mark at a quarter of an inch. Now, a big platter like this, I'll do a mark at an inch and a quarter right here. Then I'll do another mark at a quarter of an inch. No, I didn't feel a gauge for this. <laughs> I didn't feel a gauge for next, this. Next meeting he will. <laughs> but, yeah, when I go home, that's a good idea. I'll probably make one. And that way I can just stick it up and do all three marks at one time. I didn't think about that. Now, uh, old fishing canes, old bamboo fishing canes, make good things to put on your tools to keep them from getting damaged. Because you can go up and down the cane until you find just the right size to slip on there. And it don't cost you anything. There again, I'm tired. There again, I'm tired. There again, I'm tired. I'll go in here now. You're frugal. I'm frugal. Space man. Yep. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to shave the face out of it so it can This isn't. I'm just going to put a finish on it anyway. Now it's getting dry. So, do you get your formica free from samples at Lowe's or wherever? Anywhere I can find it. <laughs> I'm bad to go to the rubbish pit at home and get stuff out of the rubbish pit. You couldn't believe what folks throw away. <laughs> <laughs> now, 
because this hole is three eighths of an inch deep, when I get to the bottom of that, I don't want to go any deeper than that. So Don, you, you turn the, the back side after you do the front? Once I get the front done, and this one, you could go in there and turn the back side right now. Uh, but I'm gonna wait and do the, the front in here, then I'll turn the back side. It, it really doesn't matter to me which one I do first. Um, I just wonder how you're gonna chuck it when you reverse it. No, I'm not gonna reverse it. Uh, let's do the back side then. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's easy. Well, you've got enough clearance when I just chuck it and work the back off and shake it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it cuts a little bit lower, see? Yeah. Yeah, it would be better just to hold it with the tight. I'm going to move the camera so we'll see the back side. shape the bottom of this any number of ways. It doesn't matter. You can shape it any number of ways. Let me see. I put this on here. Like that. I didn't think about that. I was trying to get the other. That's your good. So what, what I like to do is I like to shape it well enough that when you go to pick it up, it, it's, it's deep enough that your fingers fit back here uh, and it feels good to pick it up by it. If you got it too short, then you're just picking it up with the edge of your fingers. Uh, if you got it too deep, uh, I don't think it would matter if it was too deep. But uh, you want it deep enough that when you pick the platter up, you can you can feel, and you can pass that around. You can feel that that there's room to pick it up with your fingers. Uh, here's another one. This one, this one's a little bit different from that one. The the, the pin that it is. Um, this one, this this bottom on this one is totally different from any I've ever done. And we'll pass that one on. <laughs> where are you Where are you getting the maple? Uh, I got this maple. There's a there's a. a lumber yard or a place where they cut up lumber and stuff just outside of Greenwood on the east side of town. And you can get maple and walnut and cherry and whatever you want. Uh, they, they have some really, really nice stuff. Off of 82 there? It's off of 82. You turn at the airport. And go, okay. Like you're going to the airport and it's on the left. About about a mile off of 82. Is it flatter thickness stuff or can you get bold thickness? They have, they have bold thickness stuff. <laughs> They've got a yard uh, full of uh, stuff to cut up as, as big as the uh, egg center here. The, I mean, they they do a massive amount of stuff. Yes, sir. You know the name of that place? Okay. Who can turn it to the port and go it's, 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 <laughs> uh, Oh, it's easy to find. It is. I, I'm gonna have to. It's D. It's D something, but I can't Delta. Just you send it to us, we can put it out there. Okay. Yeah. It's Delta something. I can't remember what it is. 
but now there's a place there's a place here in, in Jackson there's a place here in Jackson are y'all familiar with the Fondren district is yeah, yeah. go to yeah, the Fondren district and turn yeah. left and yeah. go down yeah. into the uh, yeah. industrial park and take yeah. a left yeah. and this guy back there has got a lot of nice stuff I thought he was did he? You talking about Pickens? Pickens? No, not no. Pickens. No. Pickens. Pickens. Pickens is closed. Pickens is closed. Yeah, he was over there closed. Uh, Give me a minute, I'll take that. Yeah, yeah. Southeast or Southern Specialty? Southern Specialty. Southern, Southern Specialty. DH4 lumber? Is it DH4 lumber? DH, yeah. Yeah, DH4. Yeah. DH4. Yeah. 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 Southern, Southern Specialty is two here. Yeah. yeah. DH4 is one at the... I went to Southern Specialty one day and it... Never yeah, he, he doesn't stay open. You just about have to call him and meet him down there. Unless he has closed up. Now, I hadn't bought anything from him since I found this place in Greenwood. He probably went on business then. No, he's, the place here is open still. I know a guy went down and got some all that. Yesterday. Okay. Pickens closed. They wanted to retire. Yeah. Couldn't find anybody yeah. to take over the business. Yeah. Yeah, Pickens closed. Yeah, we, I figured there's some. He didn't want it. We need to get some of the places this way on the left there. Yeah. Yeah. We're turning that fire to a bow to get to the hill. I'm just based on the size of this here. Try not to smoke. Yeah, there is a. You can, can do a search on Google on speed for turning sizes uh, and they'll tell you. Uh, the AAW website you can find it on there. there. There's a formula for it by diameter times. I, I don't know what it is. Yeah, it, it's really for safety, the slower you're better off. A lot of people like to turn faster. It's really what you're comfortable with. It's what you're comfortable with. Yeah. If you ever watch Jimmy Clues, mm -hmm. if you have watched Jimmy and Google mm -hmm. him and Jimmy Clues, and he turns, he'll turn that sucker all the way up. You know, 2,500, 3,000 RPM. And he's comfortable with it. So, <laughs> it really just depends. But safety wise, the slower the better. And turning fast doesn't always make you get through quicker in it. get the bottom of the plate about where you want it where it feels good to hold on to it I like to get it I like to get it almost to where these lines are where the where the uh, curvature of the back is I could go a little bit deeper on this one now let me go just back a little bit deeper Thank you. 
try to get it down to make it absolutely perfect it's just a demonstration so once i've got the back done then i can come in here and uh, work the bottom face of the plate out this is camera deep I want to go. I don't want it real deep and I don't want it real shallow. For a novice, would it be better to cut to the bottom of the, the wormhole? Well, that's what I say. I don't want to go any deeper than the bottom. But do, of the it, do it first. Yeah. For us, for again, yeah you can do it first, but I mean, I know from out here that I'm not going to be any deeper than that wormhole. I know right now I'm not getting three-eighths of an inch deep, but you're right. Do the wormhole first. That will tell you where the bottom is. I'm sorry. So the design of these pipes, is that wood burned or is it? Yeah, it's all wood burned. Yeah. Everything's wood burned, yes. Do you draw on the pipes and you draw on there first? I'd, I'd, he, he's going to get that into that at the okay. end. He's going to show some of that. I'll get into that in just a few minutes. One thing if you're talking about on how deep to go, if you turn out that wormhole first, don't take out much. You want to leave as much bulk in the center of that as you can because if you take that down out in the center first, if you're on the outside, you can get more vibration. Get, uh, more, so the, yeah, the thicker it is in the center as you're working it, the more stable wood's going to be. Mm -hmm. Of course, you could go right in the center and take out just enough, right, you know, an yeah. inch over, a half an inch over or something. But I've done it so much that I know about you, about where I'm getting to get three-eighths of an inch deep. You can use calipers. You can reach around. If it's yeah. small, you can reach around. Your fingers actually make a pretty good gauge. Yeah. You don't want to make a wash. Yeah, don't make a washer. Yeah. <laughs> you don't want the inside diameter to use the outside diameter. <laughs> and that's true for a bowl or a platter, as far as the thickness on the bottom. I mean, I, I think everybody here that's turned the bowl is turned through the bottom.
<laughs> cut your hole out and put your piece of ebony or something in. That's yeah. right. I mean, <laughs> just because you make a mistake, it doesn't, doesn't mean you can't fix it. Uh -uh. There's well, always a way to fix another, something. Another design opportunity. Yeah, yeah. A design opportunity. opportunity. Yeah. Once you get that down, see, now, the bottom of this is not flat because I didn't go deep enough to begin with. But but I knew I wasn't going deep enough, so I can come back in here now. Since I've got it down as deep as I want there, I can come back in here. Your bevel angle there. I noticed you're able to turn that curve pretty easily. Oh, this? Uh huh. You know, to be real honest, I don't know. <laughs> is this what you like? It's, it's what you're comfortable with. It's what I'm comfortable with. Mm. Yeah. It's, it's pretty close to, it may be 65, something like that. Oh, okay. It, it's, uh, like I say, it's just, it's just what, I'm, what I've done over the years and what I'm fairly comfortable with. Now, once I get it down to that, I mean, you can keep doing it with this and keep doing it with that, uh, trying and trying and trying, or you can go and say, uh, uh, Scraper. Scraper. Or negative weight scraper. Hey, Don. Yes. Can you hold up the scraper for a minute? Let him see the shape of that. Sure. It's right here in front of you. Look here? Yeah. You don't have to, you can bring, bring it back some. Right there is good. Negative rate schedule. Negative rate. No, a, a, a lot of people uh, would, would, would have a real good angle on it and they would have a good deep angle on it here. I've got just a little shallow angle. And, and why I don't know. I've got another one. Uh, you, know, get up earlier. you could call that an, a skew is a negative rake scraper because it's got it's got two got angles, two bevels, it's yeah. got two bevels. And uh, specifically, uh, is it shaper or scraper? It's scraper. a scraper. Scraper. So scraper. Is that and negative rake means that it has an angle on both sides. Yeah. Okay. If it just has one angle and it's flat on top, that's just the standard. And I don't know about everybody else, but I took all of mine. I need a negative rate. Standard ones grabbed way too much for me. I had four catches and I can imagine. So I just made all of my negative rates. They're not as aggressive, but they, for me, they cut smoother and they don't get catches. Okay. Excuse I prefer them flat. It rolls over the edge and tries to get it flat because a lot of times I'm doing wood burning in the middle of it. Okay. And so I, I would prefer it be flat. It doesn't necessarily have to be flat, but I would just prefer it being flat. I generally put slight slope. I'm going to stop right there and go to talking about 
uh, embellishments on the rim. Uh, Does anybody have any questions before he moves on to that about what he did? Go ahead, Hanley. Hey, John. Yes. Did you ever use the carbide tools to read that? No. Okay. I, I've, I've got some, but uh, I started, when I started wood turning <coughs> with homemade tools, and then I went to these Robert Sorby, and I, I just like the Robert Sorby, so that's what I stay with. Uh, and, and stay with the, just the traditional type tools. <coughs> now, you can come in here and you can embellish it with, with uh, and, and I mentioned in the handout a chatter tool, but because this is face grain, it's not end grain, a chatter tool doesn't work real well. So I, I wouldn't use a chatter tool on the, on the face grain. But Robert Sorby makes a little grinder. This is just a small one. And you can go in there and, and use this against the, the uh, face grain. on which way you hold this to give you what kind of chatter or what kind of uh, design you want. If you hold it like this, you get one. If you hold it like this, you get one. If you hold it like this, you get a different one. So you have to have a lot of practice if you want to have the same design on each platter. You have to learn how to hold it to keep it that uh, same design. ebony or coca bola or whatever you have it's a pretty pretty unique design in it you can that one you can take uh, this is a little tool I made. Uh, you get these little burrs. That, hold it, hold up by the tool rest. No, on, on the tool rest. On the tool rest, like this. Right. Okay. Lay down, down. Get, stay right there. You get these little burrs. That's a little burr. <laughs> it's like little uh, Dremel tool. It's like a Dremel tool burrs. Now this one, some people make them and and they put a. They put a magnet uh, down in here to hold it in. I didn't do that. It'll just sit down in there. You hold it up like if you turn it down like this, it's going to come out. But gives you a, a totally different, a totally different look. Gives you a, a completely different look. It's a lot finer, depending on which one of these you use. 
Sorry guys, I can't quite get it to focus on. Was that tip turning? Was that tip turning when it hits the wood? Mm -hmm. the, the, uh, this is spinning as an uh, eighth of an inch hole drilled down in this piece of brass. Mm -hmm. And because some of these because some of these pins are longer than others right here. Let's see. Because some of these pins are longer, this hole is one depth on this end. I take it out, turn it around, lock it back in there. Now this piece, the hole on, on here is too deep for this one. So it goes all the way down. You don't want it to go all the way down like that. More the edges of it. Now, if, if you don't, if you don't have a piece of Coca Cola or something, you want to mark that. Put a gray finish on it. And it's cheaper than going and buying a lot of things. And the harder the lead pencil, the darker it might be. How does that work when you finish? Will it stay there? Yeah, it'll, it'll stay there. I just take it and I, when I'm going to finish it, I use clear lacquer. I put a very light coat on it. I don't, the first coat's got to be real light so it doesn't run. Once that first coat dries, it, it'll stay right there. Now, Hairspray will make it stick too. Do what? You can spray hairspray on it. Yeah. I don't have too much of that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what, what is that? Yeah, what is that? My wife has some. I, I, I do a lot of I do a lot of wood burning. Hang on, this is wet. Yeah, there you go. There you go. <laughs> I do a lot of wood burning, then I'll pass this around for you to look at. What I'll do is, is I'll find the font that I want on my computer and I'll print it out like this M uh, and get it to size I want it and take a pair, of, a pair of scissors or a knife or something and cut out the letter. Spray it with a, 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 a glue, a light spray of glue on the back, stick it on there, draw a pencil around it. The second one right here second one right here is where I have drawn the pencil around it and I have pulled the piece of paper off and straightened up the lines with the ruler and got them straight. The third one right here, <coughs> excuse me, is where I take a, uh, a small skew on the wood <coughs> and burn the outside edges of the letter. Burning those outside edges of the letter seals the pores in the wood. Then you come over here with a, uh, that. I gotta look at it. This one right here is stippled with a, uh, on this side I believe it's stippled with a 0 .008 millimeter round ball and which turns it black uh, with the wood burner. This one over on this side is done with a 0 .004 uh, millimeter ball. They're different sizes, so you get a different look. This one over here, the the smaller doesn't show up. The stippling doesn't show up as well. Uh, now, the other thing, as you as I pass this around, you look at it. In the middle, it's stippled with the wood burner. You have to come back and black it if you want it to stay dark. And I use a uh, an ink. I found these at uh, Office Depot or something. It's just a. Uh, uh, I how to operate this thing. It's just a. a, a it's not a ballpoint pen. It's called a. Uh, rolling ball pen. And the ink comes out of it really well. I just put it, Bob Catledge 
made me an ink pen years ago before he died. And I picked it up one day and was to see what it would do. And it, it and you buy these and put it in, it works really well. The die, once you get the die on here up against the edge, because you have burned the edge of the letter, the die won't run across that burned edge. It'll run up to it unless you put way too much. It'll run up to it and stop. And then come back and, and black it with this ink. Now, if you don't want to black it, if you want it maroon or yellow or green, you can take a, a like a... a Sharpie? Uh, no, what am I looking for? No, uh -uh. The, the, uh, you called it a while ago, and I can't think of the name of it. Uh, highlighters? Mm -hmm. One of those colored highlighters? No, uh -uh. Okay. I'm talking about stippling it with oh, it. Okay. Just a little round ball in it, like I've got a Fordham tube with a little round ball, and just go in there and stipple it with that. Now you still got the outside line of it burned around the outside. You could come in there with a Prismacolor pen or something and do it orange or red or maroon or whatever you wanted to do it and have a color in it. Most of my stuff, I do it black and white. I'm not big. I don't see colors well, so I don't do it on colors. You know, I'm gonna pass that around and look at And you can see on the Bulldog, I just took a piece of uh, graph, graphite paper and slid underneath the picture of the Bulldog's face, went around it with a, with a sharp pencil and marked it off, and then the, the last one on the right is where I wood burned the face. So I can come in and... What's graphite paper? You're talking about the old... Um, carbon, 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 carbon. Well, it's, it's, yeah, but carbon paper, there's two different kinds. Graphite paper uh, is, is a lot thinner, and it comes off black on here when you, when you, mark it, it it makes a black line uh, i've got some at the house when you, it's real thick and it, it's gooey looking and it looks it's blue looking i don't know what to call that but i don't use that anymore i just use the carbon paper uh, you used to get you used to get uh, checks or something at the bank and it would be a two-part check you know and have a carbon paper between it and you just throw the carbon paper away i saved the carbon paper or i used to uh, but you can see, you can see on the, on these where I blacked all the letters. Then I come back and and spray it with a clear lacquer. Uh, that you just use one coat of lacquer. No, <laughs> that coat that that platter right there has probably got six or eight coats. Very very light coats until I get it thick enough. If you want it, the shinier you want it, the more coats of gloss lacquer. If you don't want it shiny, uh, you it's, it's just a spray on Memwax clear lacquer. Memwax is a water clear lacquer. It doesn't generally turn the uh, wood very yellow. It leaves it pretty pretty light color. Uh, you can al you can also come in here and paint the rim black. And then I took a little wood carving tool and just marked it off and took the little wood carving tool and chipped this out. So that's another way of embellishing a platter. Would that be like an electric wood carving no. tool? Uh -huh. So a no. gouge, a little... Yeah, it's just a little, a little scoop gouge and just scoop it out, you know. Uh -huh. So you all want to pass that one around? <laughs> it's, it's, it's just a different way of embellishing it. Don, yes, sir. When you lay out, like where it says Mississippi State on there mm -hmm. or Magnolia Wood Turner, do you do each letter individually? Individually, yes. And I don't have any way of you don't have a program to, of, a program to round okay. them away. And and also doing that, if you don't round it exactly what the Perfect. circumference yeah. of the of the platter is, it's not. It's going to be high on this side and low in the middle. So I, I cut out each individual letter, lay it on there kind of where I want it to be. And then I spray each letter on the back side and lay it down with a pair of tweezers until I get it laid out exactly like I want it. Take a pencil and draw around each letter 
And once I get it drawn around the letter, peel the letters off, take a uh, small uh, ruler and, and line up the edges and, and straighten them out and then take the wood burner and skew and mark the edges of the letters and do all that. So If you've it, already covered this, I apologize, but when you did the bulldog's face, mm -hmm. of course I understand going around the outside, mm -hmm. but what'd you do to get that to draw the detail of the inside, like his teeth and... Uh, well, let me see, I, I don't think I'm <coughs> Like, how'd you get it to go through the paper onto the wood? Okay, here we go. We'll do it like this. So do you use a 3M adhesive for adhering, or do you have a, a more temporary spray on adhesive? Is it 3M? It's a 3M. The M77? Yeah, yeah. Okay. 3M M77. So that's your carbon paper. Do you yeah, know? this just, actually this came out of, uh, I don't know if you can see yeah, that. Yeah, I've seen that. Yeah, it came so out of that. You put underneath that. Underneath that. And then, mm -hmm. okay, I yeah. got it. I got it. I got Just it. lay it over yeah. the top of it like that. And then, yeah, I got it now. And then, this is laying on the wood. So, mm -hmm. here's your. You want me to do it over? Let me do it over here. Uh, do it like this. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I got it now. I don't know why I didn't think of that. Yeah, it's kind of the light's a little bright on there, Don. You can't really see it. Then, well, yeah. Turn the overhead light off. There you go. The, the spotlight above you. We got it. Yeah, we'll see. Is that better? Not really. Anyway, yeah. it, it comes just do it a little bit better like this. It just it'll 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 show up and then just take the wood on your pen and just follow the lines all the way around. <coughs> it's mine is a razor tip. Um, I've had other kinds. Uh, the thing I like about the razor tip wood burning pen when you turn it on it's hot. When you turn it off it's cold. You don't have to sit there and wait ten minutes for it to heat up. So. Uh, I can sit at night. I don't go to my shop in the dark anymore at night. I can sit in the house and wood burn for hours. Uh, I'm a little bit leery about going to the shop out in the country at night. Are you saying razor or laser? Razor. Yeah, they're made in Canada. Uh, razor tip, I believe, is the actual name. They have them at Woodcraft. I, 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 um, Yes, yeah. yeah. You can buy them from Woodcraft. You can call the you can call the company in Canada and order them straight from Canada. Uh, you go, I've got most of my pens. I've just got through uh, Woodcraft. It's called Woodcraft. Sometimes if they don't have it, I'd have to call them in Canada and order a certain pen if I wanted. Um, 